Welcome everybody, Chris Record here with another 90 day challenge day of training. Today is day five and the topic is going to be Facebook advertising for beginners. We're going to go through some step by step training. Again, we are broadcasting live in the Facebook group. So if you guys are in the Facebook group right now, let's go ahead and uh, let's get you going. Hold on, let me go ahead and find this here in the background. If you're in the 90 day challenge group, you'll basically start coming on live. We just posted live right now. So you should be able to see us. We are here. You can see people are starting to just now jump on. Um, I'm sure we'll get to the point where there's hundreds of us joining. So as soon as you jump on live, make sure that you comment. Let me know how's the audio and how's the video. And of course, if audio is there, you've got a little volume button. You've got to click on the video if you can't hear it. Click and open it up full screen if you can. And let's go with that. Okay. We are excited about today's training because Facebook advertising is something that we all really want to learn. Um, it's like one of those things that it's, it's difficult to crack the code, but when you do, it's so worth it, okay? So uh, let's just start typing and let's start getting everybody going. So Facebook advertising, um, let's just say, let's, I, wanna, I wanna be like straightforward with you, okay? Facebook advertising can be tough, okay? Let's just start with that. Um, the reason is because when we are new, it's difficult to place ads that generate a profit. Therefore, we are ultimately losing money <laughs> while we are learning this strategy. Okay? So, you know, who wants to lose money? Nobody. Which makes it very tough. Okay? That's the main, that's really the main thing there. This is what really this, this is what discourages people, okay? Um, when I first started with Facebook ads, there wasn't much training available online. There weren't very many mentors or people that were offering help. You all have a significant advantage over us from when we first started. Okay, you need to understand this, okay? You all have a huge, significant advantage, right? Um, now, there are many um, opportunities to learn from very successful advertisers. There are blog posts, YouTube videos, Facebook groups, um, there are, you know, digital courses, boot camps, conferences, you know, you name it. Uh, not much of that existed several years ago when we first got started, okay? So it's important for you to understand that because um, when I first started, I lost my first two thousand dollars that I invested into ads then I almost gave up but instead I decided to get help and get training and then I was able to flip my next one thousand in ad spend into over ten thousand in revenues from there I started scaling like crazy and I've never looked back. Now the reason I'm telling you my story and the reason I'm writing up so you can read it later, the reason I'm telling you my story is because, you know, look, I lost money and I basically was ready to give up. I mean, I lost $2,000. I was done. You know, like I didn't have more money. I didn't have money at that time. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't balling out with tons of money I could have spent on advertising and it was gone. That's like $2,000. I could have bought a car with it. You know, that's money I could have paid bills with so much stuff and instead it just disappeared like in a fireplace basically. And that can crush you. But instead of giving up, I just kept going. And you know, now I, I never looked back. Um, I'm so glad I did. So it's, it's a tough, look, Facebook advertising can be tough. That's how I'm starting this off. I know a lot of you would rather hear Facebook advertising is so simple, we're all gonna get rich. That's what we wanna hear. But I'm just gonna shoot it to you straight. You know, this is, um, you know, let's, let me just, let's like, let's, let's write that. Let's be real. It's a tough code to crack. 
But for those of you that crack it, you can literally place ads and go to sleep and have profits when you wake up. <laughs> like, like, literally, if or when you crack the code, your entire life and business will change. That alone, in my opinion, makes it all worth it, okay? It's just worth it, just go for it. You know, like, you don't have to lose $2,000 like I did. Now, we're gonna talk about, um, you know, we're gonna talk about some reasons why most people lose money and how they can reduce that. We're gonna talk about that. We could really, we could really kind of go into some of the reasons why and we can cover that. But the majority of what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna give a basic step-by-step -step explanation of kind of how to get started, what things are, where to go around in your Facebook ads account. And I'm gonna pretend, you know, today's training will focus on beginners who might not even, who might have never even placed an ad. And so if some of you have placed ads, you got a head start, but sometimes beginner training is good because you might be missing something, you might be doing something wrong, or maybe you don't even understand something. And you're just taking action, and you don't even really understand what you're doing. So that's why today's training is going to help. So for this one right here, um, I'm going to put, uh, we will come back to this later. Okay. So. You guys ready? Who's excited? Who's ready? Let me know in the comments. Who's excited and who's ready to dive into Facebook ads live? Um, let them know we're live. You can post the post link there. We're live now. Who's excited? Let me know in the comments. Who's ready? Let's go here so I can read some comments. Who's ready? Who's excited? Who's ready to jump on side of this, right? Boom, boom, boom. Um, so let me know in the comments right now if you guys are beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Type the word, type the word, you know, like, Beginner, if you feel you're a beginner at Facebook ads, type the word intermediate if you're intermediate and type the word advanced if you feel like you really know your way around. It's not so much how much money you're making. Let's just talk about beginner, intermediate, or advanced based on your current knowledge, based on what you know about Facebook ads. I'd love to kind of get a pulse for everybody in here. Okay, look. Beginner, 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 intermediate, 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 beginner, starting to kind of come in. I've dumped a lot of money to ads, but still feel like a beginner, 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 beginner. So obviously like, I would say like 90% beginners and 10% intermediate. And it may be, maybe 80, 20, 80% beginners, 20% intermediate, not many advanced though. Okay, so let's go, um, let's go with some, let's go with some uh, focus. Okay, start here. Okay, you guys ready? Start here, it's gonna seem simple. Google, start here, Google, search Facebook ads, find Facebook help section, okay. Remember, there wasn't many people doing this when I first got started, so here's what I did. Go to Google, search the word Facebook ads, skip the actual ads, see how this one's an ad, that one's an ad, that one's an ad, skip those, and then you got three, there's like right off the bat, there's three sections here, advertising on Facebook, how Facebook ads work, Facebook business, marketing on Facebook, um, you know, fa about Facebook ads, beginner's guide to advertising on Facebook, uh, beginner's guide to Facebook advertising here. Listen, start here. You guys, um, if you're not learning how to be able to go grab free information that exists, um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna be in the waiting game. You're always gonna wait for some guru or something to teach you. You know, you're not gonna be able to move at your own speed. So first things first, you have to learn how to be able to move at a fast pace. The way you're gonna move at a fast pace is going to be to literally to learn how to go and dig up research yourself. You're gonna to have to learn, you know, I love going to the source. So look at all these are like Facebook's actual business section. I love going to the source. To me, this is the best way to get started. So it's been like two minutes and let's kind of look through here. Facebook.com slash business. Go there and, you know, just kind of review this, you know, look. Look at the page, you know, they've got some articles, you know, you can basically, you can basically, um, you know, learn how to use Boomerang by Instagram to create business content. There's just cool stuff. Now, it's all corporate. It's not going to be as fun as the marketing angles we teach, you know, it's definitely not going to replace them, 
because these guys aren't going to teach marketing angles, but it's still valuable. You can kind of learn, you can kind of like, like just kind of like learn all, you kind of like just start to read stuff and start to start to understand stuff, you know? You, you've got all of this stuff here, right? All I did was went to marketing on Facebook and like look at this, you got getting started with ads, buying Facebook ads, ad formats, ad placements, choosing your audience, managing your ads. So this is gonna give you like that baseline foundation, okay? So like you're gonna go here to ad formats and it's gonna basically give you like, you know, the different types, you know, you got photo ads, you got video ads, you got carousel ads, slideshow ads, canvas ads, collection ads, and it's kind of like showing you lead ads, dynamic ads, link ads. You know, it, it kind of like gives you like a basic thing and you might go, okay, I want to learn about how to get leads, okay? Well, they, they, it kind of tells you. Now, it's really corporate and you're going to, you know, a lot of people just get lost here. They feel like it's just a waste, but, you know, there'll, there'll be stuff that's, um, you know, our blueprint e-learning course. There's just, you just got... What I do is I guide through this stuff really fast. I go in here and I just kind of go really fast and I just look for like a basic understanding. Okay, so like I'll give you an example. Um, you can, like right off the bat, here's a baseline understanding. I can show my ads on Facebook, I can show my ads on Instagram, and I can show my ads to their audience network. Okay, there's three basic, basic things right there. So if that's all I got from this page, I get a basic understanding. Facebook ads, I can place them on Facebook, Instagram, audience network. So anyways, go through here on your own. And you'll start to kind of learn, you know, all this different stuff, you know, you'll start to kind of get a basic, a baseline overview. Okay, that's what Google's going to help you do. Now, don't spend hours and hours and hours because they, they don't really know, you know, like, let's do how Facebook ads work. They don't really understand, like, what we do. So they, they won't be able to help you. But, like, look at this. Choose your objective. Okay, so this kind of walks you through, you know, like, look, look, step one, choose your objective. Step two, select your audience. And step three, decide where you want your ad to run. And step four, select your budget. Step five, pick the format of your ad. And then step six, measure all your results. So like there's a, there's a quick six step system. So like as simple as it is, that's what I understand, okay? I go through and I got a basic six, so let's review these six steps from Facebook. When you're placing ads, one, you're gonna choose your objective. What type of ad are you gonna be? Is it gonna be a video ad, a picture ad, whatever? Number two, select your audience. Like, who do you want to see it? I want women ages 25 to 35 living in Arizona who like entrepreneurship. Decide where to run my ad. I want it to either run on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Set my budget. I want to spend $5 a day. Uh, pick a format. I want it to be a, a photo ad. And place my order. Then step six, I'm going to measure and manage my ad. I want to go and see if I'm getting any results. And then look, they even tell you when you measure your ad, there's three different ways you could do it. They have three different sections. You can measure it in ads manager, power editor, or business manager. So this is a basic overview of where to go to get information. Once you learn this, trust me, it's like when you learn, when you learn how to be fast and when you learn how to go through and, and go to Facebook itself, go to the source, they're not going to teach you strategy, but they'll give you a high-level understanding of what things are. So that's what I want to do today. I want to fill in the gap on a high level understanding for beginners of what all this stuff is and try to make some sense out of it so that you guys feel comfortable inside your Facebook ads account. But if there's anything that's over your head, you know you could always go back here and you can always look at this, okay? So, that being said, here we go, okay? Here is a high level overview of Facebook ads for beginners, okay? First things first, you got to go set up a Facebook ads account. So inside of your um, Facebook account, when you're logged in, you can click up here on the top right. There's a little arrow. It's easier if you do this from desktop than from mobile. There's a little um, arrow, and you'll notice you have these business manager accounts. We'll come back to that. Okay, this is all Facebook ads. The main thing you're going to want to do is go in there and actually create an ads account. Now, a little simple way to go there is go facebook.com slash business. Facebook.com slash business. Okay, so watch this. I'm going to put little bullet points. Create a Facebook ads account at facebook.com slash business. Okay. Start there. Start with something really simple. You basically, I already have a Facebook ad account, so it's going to say create an ad. But you're going to basically go in here and you're going to create an ad and you're going to start placing, um, you're going to go in and you're going to start doing this, right? So once you create your ads account, then it's going to let you go in and create an ad. Okay, so let's put that in. Um, next, create your first Facebook ad, okay, in your 
ads account. And now we're, it defaults you to what's called ads manager. Now, there are three, three sections to manage your Facebook ads account. Okay, there's three sections. One, ads manager. Two, power editor. Three, business manager. Okay, those are the three sections, right? So right here you can see up on the top left it tells you where you are. I'm in ads manager. So your top left, when you're inside your ads account, your top left up here is what's gonna help you navigate your account. So you can click this and it's gonna give you your frequently used things, but then you're gonna hold over all tools. Now this, this top navigation is basically gonna walk you through everything, okay? This is gonna show you, this is just your frequently used, but over here it's gonna show you how to plan your ads, okay? You can basically do research right here. How to create your ads. Look, you can use business manager, ads manager, or power editor. Those are your three main sections. But they also have the section you can make posts. Um, and I do use that. And maybe we'll cover that, maybe we won't. But these are the three main sections. Business manager, ads manager, power editor. Okay, these are the three sections you need to know. We're gonna talk about these. And this is where you're gonna create and manage. Look, there's even help. <clears throat> okay. Measure. Okay, after, after you create ads, you need to see if they're working. This is where you're going to go into your ads reporting. Assets. This is where you're going to start creating things. Like, um, you're going to create a Facebook pixel here. Um, you're going to create an audience. If you want to save an audience for later, you can save it. Like, you can basically say, I always want to target, you know, women 35 to 55 who love country music. You can save an audience that you can always just with one click, you can, it can remember that audience for you. You can save images you want to use for your ads. You can save all the stuff, okay? And then settings, this is where you're going to go, like, figure out your payment options and your billing and stuff like that, okay? So this is, your, this is really, like, your basic Facebook advertising navigation up here. It's not complicated at all. Out of all these, all I really use out of all these on a day-to-day -day basis is Ads Manager and Power Editor on a day-to-day -day basis I'm, I'm, and, and ads reporting. So if you really want to get, like, a, just a, a hot spot, on a day-to-day -day basis, when you log in, I'm, I'm really ever only going to like ads manager and power editor to place ads and then ads reporting. That's really it. Those are the three sections I use the most. Let's, let's put those down. Um, there are three main sections um, to do that. The three areas of, of a Facebook ads account that I spend 90% of my time are, and let's look at that, it's, it's basically um, ads reporting, ads manager, power editor. And I'll explain to you kind of what I do. So when I, when I go in here and I place an ad, right now I'm gonna place an ad, I'm just gonna place one to something live right on the spot so you guys can kind of see this. When I place an ad, then afterwards I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna go over here and like tomorrow or whatever, I'm gonna wanna log in and see if, if it got any clicks or if it got any sales or if anything happened, right? So obviously, ads manager and ads reporting are the two main sections you're gonna use. The reason I use Power Editor is because Power Editor lets you work on all your ads a lot. So Power Editor is like, if you have like more than a few ads, you're gonna need, to, you're gonna need something where you can like manage all your ads all at, one, all at once, you know? Like I might want to pause 20 ads at one time, or I might want to duplicate 20 ads, or I might want to change the, the billing amount on 20 ads. That's kind of like your power editor. That's the word power. It allows it like a bulk editor. It allows you to basically just save time. You know, that's kind of what that is. So all these other things, you don't really need to get overwhelmed by them all. And you know, you know what's crazy is that we've done millions of dollars and I don't even know all this stuff. So don't worry about like being overwhelmed as a beginner. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with Ads Manager. That's where we are right now, and I'm going to walk through uh, the basics. So we're going to talk on a very high-level overview of, of some basics about Facebook ads. Okay, let's start over here. So now that you understand this top navigation, let's start over here on the left. There's three sections here. One section is your campaign. The next section is your ad set, and the next section is your ads. Okay? Um, campaign, um, ad set, and ads. Campaign, ad set, and ads. So... What you're essentially looking to do is just looking to understand the, uh, the difference between those. Okay, let me, let me go back here to my, my thing, make sure that I'm getting good comments. Okay. What you're really looking to do is understand, let's, get, let's talk on a high level, understand the difference between these. Okay. Campaigns. What campaigns are is 
is where you basically for whatever objective you're trying to achieve with your Facebook ads, okay, such as I want to get more website clicks or I want to make more sales of my product or I want to generate more leads or I want to get more views on my video or I want to get more likes on a post. Whatever the, your objective is, like what are you trying to do? You need to create a new campaign for each objective, okay? So let's say that like engagement, let's say you say I want to get more likes, comments and shares on my post, okay? You would place an engagement ad. You would try to get more engagement. You would click on this and then you would tell Facebook what type of engagement you're trying to get and on that one you would do post engagement, okay? So literally you would tell, you would tell, you would go to Facebook and you say, okay, what I'm trying to do is this, okay? That's what a campaign is. A campaign is basically you're telling Facebook what you're trying to do. Now, you can only have one objective per campaign. So if you want to start out getting a bunch of likes on your post, if you came to me and said, Chris, I want to change that to try to get a bunch of sales. Well, you can't. You would have to create a new campaign. A new campaign that says, now my new campaign is I want to get a bunch of conversions. I want to get a bunch of sales. So essentially, that's what a campaign is. A campaign has one objective. You've got only got one objective per campaign. So one campaign might be, okay, I'm going to try to get video views. Another campaign might be, I'm going to try to get a bunch of likes and shares and comments. And another campaign might be, I'm going to try to get a bunch of sales. These are different campaigns. Okay, that's what a campaign is. So you cannot place an ad without a campaign. You have to tell Facebook what you're trying to do and you can't change it later. You can pause it, you can delete it, you can stop it, but if you want to change it, you have to create a new campaign. Does that make sense? Say yes. If that makes sense, if it, say yes, I understand campaigns. Okay? If, say it in the comments. Say yes, I understand campaigns. Yes, I understand campaigns. Okay. So now that you understand what a campaign is, Inside of a campaign, we have to choose an objective. We have to choose what we want. So I'm going to quickly run through each of these objectives to try to help you understand um, which one might be a good fit for what you're trying to do. Okay, so they broke them into three categories, but that doesn't really help. Um, out of all of the things here, the only objectives I really use are conversions, engagement, and video views. Okay, my top three. Okay, so let's, let's go over here and let's say... Um, Choose your campaign objective. Okay, that's the next thing you want to do. Um, my top three objectives I use are engagement, conversions, and video views. That's Those are my top three. Okay, engagement, conversions, and video views. So you don't have to be a master. Like app installs. Well, how many of you are going to develop a Facebook app? Probably like none of you. So don't even worry about this. You know, lead generation, I do have some lead generation ads running, but it's like, at the end of the day, that's a different type of thing you're trying to do. Um, product catalog, yes, we do have some product catalog. That's like, there's a way to be able to set that up that's really cool, but that's, the, that's intermediate to advanced. That's not, you're not going to deal with that today, so don't even worry about it. Um, store visits, well, we're not doing a traditional store. Brand awareness, we're not doing branding. Local awareness, no, we're trying to sell to everybody, not to people in a local city. Reach, no. Traffic. Yes, we want traffic, but we're if we're going to get it, we'd rather we're selling stuff with Shopify. So we don't want just a bunch of visitors to come to our site. We don't want traffic. We want conversions. So we want actual conversion conversions. So the reason I'll do video views is because sometimes I want a video to go viral, so I do a lot of that. And the reason I do engagement is that I want to post or you know to get a lot of social proof on it. And the reason I do conversions is because I want to make money from it. Those are the three that I do the most. So let's choose engagement right here and let's just do um, campaign name. Now with a campaign name, I use a na I, I do what's called a naming convention. I like all my ad I like all my ads to be able to have like a like a very easy to understand naming convention. You can do whatever you want, but what I usually do is I usually do like two things in the in the title so I can really easily see the campaign name. One is like what what type of post um, is it? You know, like, what am I running the ad to? And then the other one is like, what type of audience? And I might even put, if it's like video views, I might put video views. So it'll go something like this. Let's say I want to advertise. Right now, I just loaded in a, um, a rap video. So maybe we'll, we'll start with that. I just loaded in, in over here on my personal fan page. Over here. And yeah, we'll do this in real time right now. On my personal fan page, I just loaded up this video right here. One hour ago. Here's a sneak peek at my next rap music video called Life of an Entrepreneur. 
So this is a music video and I want to get some views to it, right? It's got 1.3 thousand views. I just launched it. I want to get this to like 100 thousand views. Okay, so my objective is I want to get some views to it. So I can either do video views or I can do engagement. I just want to do engagement though because my objective is I want to get a lot more likes and shares and comments. I want this, this post to be buzzing. So right here, my objective is I want to get this video a bunch of engagement. Okay, so I have to first, I have to name what type of post is this. Next, what is my, um, and then next, what audience am I advertising to? So let's go over here and let's call this post, it's called Life of an Entrepreneur, so let me shorten it. L-O-E Rap Trailer. Let's just call it L-O-E Rap Trailer because that's what I'm advertising. And then the second part is my audience that I'm going to advertise. And let's say that I want to advertise to um, influencers. I want to advertise to people that like, you know, Grant Cardone and Ty Lopez and stuff like that because this, this video has like a jet on it. You know, I want to advertise like successful influencers. Their audiences might enjoy this. So I'm going to go over here my, and I'm going to put influencers. Okay, just on a very simple lake. My campaign name is Life of an Entrepreneur Rap Trailer. And then I'm going to target influencers. Now, you don't have to. I could just do Life of an Entrepreneur Rap Trailer. So whatever, you got to have a name. So I've chosen, a, I've, I've got a campaign, I've chosen a, an objective, which is engagement, and then I've given it a name. Okay, continue. Okay, now we're on section two, ad set. This has three sections, your audience, your placements, and your schedule. So what you're going to do is you're going to tell Facebook, who do you want to see the ad? You're going to tell Facebook, where do you want the ad to be placed? And then you're going to tell Facebook, here's how much of a budget I want to spend on this. Okay, these three things are what we're going to do right now. So. When I come in here to my audience, I've got two things I can do right off the bat. I can create a new audience or I can use a saved audience. Okay, so if you're, if you're, if you're going to advertise the same audience a lot, you might want to like, after you create all this, there's going to be a little button down here to save it. So once we create all this, I can press save this audience and I can name it. Okay, so this, this is kind of what you can do. And, and by the way, I just realized I'm in, a, I'm in a, an account. I want to go over here to this test account real quick. I'm going to start over real quick. I want to go to a different account. Um, I'm in some old I'm in some old account that I don't want to mess with. So I'm gonna basically um, start over. Hold on, Techademics. Let me get into. I don't know why it's not letting me get into this Techademics account. I want to go to my uh, test account, Techademics Training. There we go. Um, start over. Okay. So again, just starting over real quick. Engagement, and I'll do uh, L O E Rap Trailer Influencers. Okay. I'm right back where I was. I just realized I was in a different, I have a bunch of Facebook ads account. I want to be in our test account because I don't want to actually place ads that um, I forget about for like months. Okay, so there's two options. I can create a new one or I can use a saved one. You can see I've got a bunch of saved audiences in here, you know, tons and tons, you know, whatever it is, like e-commerce platforms, personal development audiences, direct selling, internet marketing, golf audiences for golf niches we go into. So we, I just have tons and tons and tons of them. So when you, when you create an audience, you can go down here and you can save it if you want, okay? Um, let's start by creating new. Custom audiences. This would be if like, if you want to like retarget to people that have visited your website or if you want to upload a customer list or um, if you want to target to like some sort of custom thing, um, like you can create a new one right here. So like you can create a new custom audience. You could upload a file of all your customers. Um, you can put a Facebook pixel on your website and you can retarget everybody that visits your website. You can actually um, advertise to everybody who like comments and shares on your, on, your, on your posts on Facebook. There's a lot of stuff you could do. That's more intermediate level. All this custom audience stuff is more intermediate. Let's skip that. What we want to do is we want to focus on creating basic ads to basic audiences so you all have, you're all comfortable. We want to make it as comfortable as possible. So you chose an objective. Let's just choose a basic audience. Locations. United States. So if you're selling, if your Shopify store is selling to people in the, in the United States, that's the audience you want. Okay, so most of you are going to have the United States as your audience. But depending on what you're trying to do, um, if you're selling something like, in a, like something that could be sold to people all over the world, you might want to change that. So here's some basic things you could do. If you wanted to also target people in like the United Kingdom, you would start typing it in and then you would select it. So now you have two countries you're, you're targeting. And if I wanted, I could even make it like Australia. I could do like New Zealand. Um, and I could do, you choose the country. And then I could choose like Canada. And there's like five, for example, English-speaking countries that have credit cards that are likely buyers. 
But if I'm only really shipping my products to the United States, then I'm just going to target United States. So I usually use um, three types of I use I use when I'm targeting people in different locations. Um, I actually have three types of things I do. So we'll talk about ad sets, create an ad set, and create an audience. Okay, um, create your campaign. Okay, next one is create an ad set and choose your audience. Um, and then what I uh, my top three audiences uh, I use are okay. Number one is going to be United States. Let's say my top three. Um, countries I use are number one United States number two is big five what I call big five which is USA United Kingdom Australia New Zealand and uh, Canada those are my those are my um, is it you oh, yes I'm not. these are my um, these are my five my big five is United States United Kingdom Australia New Zealand and Canada I'll target them a lot. If I've got something that I want to be able to sell a little bit more worldwide, those are great audiences, do a lot of business. And then the last one I'll do is worldwide, where I literally target everybody. Okay? So I'll either get laser focused, United States, if I'm only sh selling and shipping there. Big five is what I call big five if I'm actually going to start, um, if I want to get some international reach and some international exposure. And then worldwide if I want to go all the way. So when we go back here, this is an example of what I would call big five. Now, if I wanted to go worldwide, I would just type in the word worldwide, all one word, and this region comes up, worldwide region. You choose that, it'll override everything. And now my ads are going to worldwide. Okay, so this worldwide right here, look at this, potential reach 1.7 billion people. So right now I could place an ad and reach 1.7 billion people. Now I don't want to because that's too many people. Uh, that would cost me too much money and that's too generic. So. Literally, that's what Facebook's working with. So when you, if I was to change that to just the United States, instead of being able to target 1.7 billion people, there's 215 million. Way different, right? So those are the big, those are the ones that I do. Okay, so that's locations. Okay, now let's go down to age and gender. Okay, the basic rule of thumb with age is you're selling something. So since you're selling something, you're probably going to want people at least 21 years and older. Because they gotta like have credit cards and they gotta be buyers. That's a general rule of thumb when you're doing e-commerce is 21 and older. If you're just trying to get people to watch a video like I am, you know, who cares? Do whatever you want to do. But if you're trying to get people to actually buy something, you're probably gonna want to do 21 and older. Um, if any and, and obviously use common sense with age. If you're selling something that's like for moms, you know, then there's not gonna be as many moms at age 21. Okay, so you got to start using kind of like common sense. You might want to start in your 30s if you're targeting parents, or you know, if you're targeting things that like and that you got to like you got to ask yourself what is the most likely age for this. Okay, so there's 200 million people in the United States between uh, 21 to 65 years old, or 65 plus. Okay, that's age. Gender, you're either going to do men and women, or you're going to just do men. Now there's 200 million. There's 92 million, or women. There's 106 million. So there's more women on Facebook than there are men. So women, 106 million accounts, men, um, 92 million accounts that we can advertise to, 21 and over. Now another thing, if you're advertising anything alcohol related or anything of any concern whatsoever, make sure you have 21 year, years and older. This is just a, a general rule of thumb that's good. It's just getting you a better audience anyways. Okay, so if your product isn't niche specific, then just choose all. Languages, don't worry about that because you're targeting English speaking anyways. Um, this part here is where we're going to go in and put in all of our keywords. This is like the detailed targeting is like the main part. And then connections is not really relevant. You're going to skip this section. Um, you know, you, you're, this is like if you have like a big fan page, you could, you could run one ad to your existing fans and you could run another ad to make sure that you're targeting people who are not your fans yet. There's all kinds of stuff you could do. Skip this. Just don't even bother with this. Okay. So let's go in here. And let's choose uh, targets. Okay, remember I said I was gonna do influencers. Okay, so I've already done this in a previous ad. So what I'll do is I'll look and I'll kind of go, okay, who are some top influencers that their audience might want to watch this video? Okay, so you saw Ty Lopez popped up. I'm gonna do Ty Lopez. And right off the bat, you can see this information over here. When I hover over, 
it's inf so right here Ty Lopez as I start talk as I start typing it's gonna kind of auto populate so I'm gonna see okay here's Ty Lopez over here it's gonna say what type of audience it is you guys are pretty much gonna want to focus on interests okay interests are the ones that are cheaper to advertise to so a lot of you if you guys start advertising to things like behaviors or employers or jobs or stuff like that your ads are gonna cost a lot more okay focus on interests start with interests. this is what you want you want it has to say interests once you become intermediate you can do more audiences but until you're until you're actually making money focus on interests don't don't go with the other one so Ty Lopez interests and then this gives me a snapshot that there's 3.8 million people in the world that that have an interest in Ty Lopez three an, an interest in maybe a page having to do with him or the keyword or whatever Facebook has built an audience based on something we don't really know how Facebook has this information but we're just assuming Facebook you know grabbed it from something so 3.8 million people worldwide that does not mean see I'm targeting the United States so that does not mean this is going to show to 3.8 million so let's choose it okay out of those 3.8 million um, that it can target look what it did it did potential reach 13 million so even though it says 3.8 million this reach is going to be very 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 different and that's the thing that confuses most beginners and what I do is I say my advice is don't worry about it okay this is this is just don't worry about it what you want to do is just focus on getting the right interests in here and focus on getting this number here to to be relatively where you want it to be now I'm gonna give you some examples right now of your potential reach audience size okay um, next uh, you know choose and and we're gonna you know you're choosing you're choosing basically this stuff here choose your audience so the age the gender the location everything is called your audience okay next choose your audience um, and get the right size okay let me give you some some gu guidelines here um, my top um, recommendations are okay um, if you're trying to do viral video views okay audience um, this I'm, not, I'm gonna use the exact words they're using potential reach okay if you're trying to do uh, these put viral video views potential reach equals let's say 2 million to 10 million okay plus is that's what size you want it if you're trying to get viral video views if you're trying to get cheap you know um, low-cost video views so if, if all I want is to run an ad to this video right here and get a lot of views then what I'm gonna want to do is I'm going to want to um, run it just straight to this audience look millions of people okay so that's kind of what you want to do is you want to run an ad to millions of people because you're gonna get rewarded with low-cost engagement but if I want those ads to convert then that 13 million person audience is too big it's too generic so I'm looking for viral video views I want a big audience okay um, if I'm looking for let's say um, if I'm looking for uh, let's say post good post engagement okay then I'm gonna do I'm gonna actually just gonna do the reach to make this a little smaller you know I'm gonna put the reach at maybe like 1 million to 2 million and then if I'm looking to um, to sell a Shopify product directly for reach then I'm gonna look at you know like 200,000 to 800,000 okay there's there's three for you right off the bat right so there's there's an example of um, of kind of my style my top recommendations are depending on what you're trying to do you get a bigger reach so if you're actually trying to sell something if you're trying to go for conversions try to stick to like 200,000 800,000 in your audience um, if you're trying to get good engagement on on a post like get more likes shares comments and everything then then it's okay to go up over a million two million plus um, if you're trying to get viral video views then you're gonna want to go with a big audience okay um, so the smaller you get the more targeted you're getting which is why it becomes easier to sell but you don't really want to get much smaller than 200,000 because then it becomes expensive so the smaller audience like if you said okay I want to target 35 year old men who are real estate agents who live in Phoenix Arizona who work for Keller Williams real estate agency you know that might only be like 
there might only be 200 total agents like that in the world or whatever in that area. So it would be very expensive to target, to laser target in on 200 people. But the bigger, what they call broad, the more broad you go, let's write that down. Um, the more broad you go, the cheaper your engagement. But the more broad, the less likely to convert. Okay, and then I'll put like intermediate users. Learn about broad targeting with, uh, learn about maturing a pixel. Let's just call it maturing a pixel. Okay, intermediate. If you guys are beginners, don't even worry about that. You know, and because this, this right here, if you're intermediate, if you guys are watching your intermediate, what you could do is you could go very broad, like an audience in the millions, and as long as you're using a Facebook pixel, Facebook will start to optimize that audience and find buyers in that broad audience. So for instance, you could actually advertise to like, you have a soccer product, you're advertising to 10 million people who like soccer. Well, in the beginning, Facebook has no idea who out of those 10 million people wanna buy your product. But after time, after you start selling it, Facebook will get smarter. And after you made about 100 sales, Facebook will say, oh, I get it. We know who's buying your product. It's this little group. And Facebook will find it for you. So Facebook will take the guesswork out of it for you. But if you're a beginner, you don't have that kind of money to just throw around. You don't have thousands of dollars to just like play around with until Facebook figures it out. You, in the beginning, you've got to figure it out because you don't have endless amounts of money. Okay, that's, that's why I'm trying to focus on beginners because beginners are, um, are a little bit better for that. Okay, um, so again, those are my basic ideas and concepts there about that. So now, for interests, you can, you can advertise one interest at a time or you can group them. Okay, so um, let's go here and let's go um, understanding Facebook interests, which are like, you know, um, keywords for your audience. Okay, understanding Facebook interests, okay, you can target one interest at a time or group them. You can also create groups, um, you can also create rules that they must like two interests or they must like three interests or four or five uh, and so on and so on. So you could say they must like this and this. That is called intersecting audiences and it's a very popular thing that even beginners are going to use. Okay, called intersecting audiences. We'll come back and we'll kind of cover that in a second. Um, in fact, I'll put a little thing here. Intersecting audiences and how to use them. Okay, so that's called intersecting audiences. Um, also, you can exclude uh, keywords, interests, and keywords. This helps um, make sure you are targeting the right audience. Okay, so we're going to talk real quick about. I'm going to show you how to do one interest at a time. I'm going to show you groups. I'm going to show you how to be able to set a rule where they must like multiple things, intersecting audiences, and I'm going to show you exclusions. Okay? So um, let's see if I can make this easier. Okay, we got, let me go in all caps. Let's go groups. No, we'll go single interests, grouped interests, um, intersecting interests, and excluding interests. There we go. So I'm going to cover like all four of these really quick for you, okay? Single interests, grouped interests, intersecting, and excluding. Or um, maybe I'll put like solos a little better. Okay. Okay, so here we go. This would be an example of a solo interest. You have one keyword, one idea, and that's it. It's a big enough audience size. Let's go for it. So I'm literally just going to go to Ty Lopez, and that's it. I'm just going to advertise to fans of Ty Lopez, and the benefit of this is that if my ad, maybe, I'm, maybe I have a picture of me and Ty Lopez in the ad. Well, if I have a picture of me and Ty Lopez, then it's really going to work well because Ty Lopez's fans are going to recognize him. Or if maybe, if, maybe, if maybe I'm doing a webinar with Ty Lopez this Thursday, then it would be nice to advertise to friends of Ty Lopez because they're going to be likely to convert. So there are times when you want to advertise to one audience specifically and see how well it does. But generally, there's also the ability to group. So when you group, the idea is very, very simple. You can click the mouse here and you just add another interest. 
So when you add in one, Facebook is going to start guessing some more interests you might be um, interested in. So I'm targeting influencers, which is a group. So Gary Vaynerchuk is also an influencer. So now I have two people. The audience size went up. So when you group items, when you group things, the audience size goes up. So watch, grouped interests. When you group interests, audience size goes up, okay? That's important to understand. So if you're trying to get your audience size higher, you would group together interests, okay? Gary Vaynerchuk, Ty Lopez, let's do Grant Cardone, and let's do um, you know, Ryan Dice, and let's do Russell Brunson, okay? One, two, three, four, five. I got five influencers, that's 26 million people right there, okay? So when you group things, the, the interest, the reach goes up. So if you're trying to get a high reach, you would wanna do so by grouping. I could run solo ads to just a Gary Vaynerchuk, another one just a Grant Cardone, another one to Russell, another one to Ryan, another one to Ty, or I can group them. Now the way group, group things work is this. Facebook is gonna show this ad to people that like Gary Vaynerchuk or who like Grant Cardone. So this is not, the person does not have to like all five of these. They just have to, like in this audience, it's a big audience, all somebody has to do is like one of these people and they're in this audience. They don't have to like all of them, okay? So that's very, very, very different, okay? If I want them to like all of them, I have to narrow down the audience to do that. Or if I wanna exclude one, like I want all people that like all these people, but people who do not like Ty, Ty Lopez, I would exclude Ty Lopez. So this right here just basically creates like a big pot, a big pile of all the fans of all of these people, and it's 26 million people, boom, big audience. Now, let's narrow it down. Let me show you um, what it would be like if I wanted to advertise to, what if I wanted to target people who happen to like all five of these people? What if I was gonna have, like an example, what if I'm gonna have a conference and I have guest speakers, Gary Vaynerchuk, Grant Cardone, Russell Brunson, Ryan Dyson, Ty Lopez. F these five people are my guest speakers. I could put a picture with all five of them and I could do a super hyper targeted ad where I'm only targeting people that like all five of them. I would do that with the narrow audience feature. So watch how this narrow audience feature works, okay? I'm gonna create one here that is Ty Lopez, and I'm gonna create another one, narrow further. I'm gonna create one here that is uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, narrow further. I'm gonna create one here that is, um, let's see, Ryan Dice, and I'm gonna narrow further, I'm gonna create one here that is, you know, Grant Cardone, wherever he went, right there, okay. So now each one of these is a solo audience. Grant, Ryan, Gary, Ty, and then we'll put Russell in this one. I'll just delete those. Anytime you want to delete something, you just hover, you click the little X. Okay, so look what I have here. That audience of 26 million people is now only 11,000 people. Okay, because I said to Facebook, I want to target people who like Russell Brunson and who also like Ty Lopez and who also like Gary Vaynerchuk, also like Ryan Dice, also like Grant Cardone. So I'm basically saying, hey look, show me people who like all five of these people. That's 11,000 people. That is called a hyper-targeted audience. Those people are like the most loyal people that I could ever advertise to. They like all these people, and if I said all these five people are gonna be on a webinar tonight, or let me be more realistic. Let's say that I was gonna just do a, a lead capture. Let's say I was like, hey, I wanna generate leads. Hey, I've got, um, the top lessons I learned from Ty Lopez, Grant Cardone, Russell Brunson, Gary Vaynerchuk, and Ryan Dice. Here's the top five lessons I learned from all these five people. I could write a blog article with um, a lesson I learned from each one of them, and then I could advertise this audience, and it would be insanely perfectly matched. But because it's small, it's gonna be expensive. Remember, the smaller it is, the more expensive it is. The larger it is, the cheaper it is. So this is a little too small for my taste, but if I had a product I was selling with all five of these people in it, I might try this. Now, some of these people are more popular than others. You know, Russell Brunson, 147,000 people there. Ty Lopez, 3.8 million. So some people are more popular than others. Gary, 3.8 million. Ryan, 193. Grant Cardone, 1.2 million. So if I took out Ryan, and if, then it's gonna jump it up to, to a bigger audience, okay? So do you see how that works right there? And if I take out this right here, Russell, even bigger. 6.5 million people like Ty Lopez, Gary Vaynerchuk, and Grant Cardone each. So basically the same type of person that follows one 
generally follows the others as well. So now I have a much bigger audience. So as I continue to add more people to it, it's going to continue to narrow. See, I have 6.5. I can narrow it further down. Let's do, um, let's add uh, Mike Dillard, and it's going to go down to 3.6 million. Okay? Let's narrow it further, and let's add, um, let's go to Lewis House. And now it's 3.4 million. It just keeps going down. Narrow it further. Let's go down and let's do people who also like Ray Higdon. And it just keeps going down and down and down and down and down. Okay, so you can kind of do that, okay? That's another way to be able to do it. What you're looking to do is you're looking to basically either group them together or you're looking to what's called intersect them. Now, let me give you something that's more Shopify related for this, okay? Um, let's go here. Hold on. Let me erase all these. You just click the X to erase them all. Okay, let's do Shopify related. So if I want to target people who like cigars... Okay, let's target men. Let's narrow it down. Men who are 35 years old, older men, because younger men don't generally smoke cigars as, uh, on, on average. So older men who like cigars, there's 2.7 million people in the uh, United States, right? I think we're running in the United States audience. So in the United States, ages 35 to 65 men, there's 2.7 million people who like cigars. Now, what I'll do is I might narrow this audience down, okay? Let's narrow it down. People who like cigars and who like scotch, okay, scotch whiskey, okay? There is a good audience. Now, if I'm in a Shopify audience, remember, the audience size I'm looking for is about 200,000, 800,000 if I'm trying to sell a Shopify product. So here you go, 620,000 people. That's in between 200,000, 800,000. 620,000 people that like cigar and like scotch. So if I can find a product in Shopify that has to do with scotch and cigars, then I can advertise to this audience and this is going to be a very good audience. These are people that like scotch, whiskey, and cigars. So maybe what I'm doing is I'm using, a, in, in, in the graphic, maybe I'm using a picture of a, of a person smoking a cigar, sipping a glass of scotch. And let's look at that. Let's go to Google Images just to, just to give an example of what you would do to target that audience. Scotch and cigar. Okay. So we'll go over here to images, okay? So see this image right here? This is called an intersecting audience, okay? This is really important to know as a beginner. There are two, two very separate things that go together. On one hand, you have people that like scotch but do not like cigars. And then on the other hand, you have people who like cigars but do not like scotch. So this audience contains people that hate this. So, but it also contains people that like this. By using an intersecting audience, you can tell Facebook, show me people who like cigars and like scotch. Who like cigars and like scotch. And that is where images like this represent a combination of two things that the person loves. Okay? That is called an intersecting audience and that is what is powerful. Okay, so what you're looking to do is you're looking to learn how to tap these intersecting audiences because you're able to take a very large audience and make it just right to sell Shopify ads by intersecting it. So any chance you can in all your products, ask yourself, does my image represent two different audiences that normally might not like each other, but Facebook is going to find the ones that like each other directly? That is the power of intersecting audiences. So this power here of these intersecting audiences and how to use them, okay? Um, find two or more interests and use the narrow further option. For example, interest one, cigars. Interest two, scotch whiskey, okay? Now, you guys should do this on your own. You guys should go in here. Uh, look what I did. 35-year-old men, 35-plus men who like cigars and who and, and I use narrow further and I put in scotch. Okay? You should try this yourself so you get an idea for how to do this. Okay? Now, these are um, – this right here. So the, the, the methodology, um, the, the understanding is this. Okay? The under, let, me, let me put this down. The understanding is this. Some people who 
like cigars, don't like scotch. Some people who like scotch don't like cigars. Facebook will only show your ad to people who like both. That's, that is the power. That's the, that's the sales proposition right there. Facebook will only show it to people who like both. Um, if you can use an image of both, it will convert much better, okay? That's what this comes into. That's where we're coming on here to images. If you can find an image that represents. Now, this isn't necessarily a product, but you can find it. Go to, go to AliExpress, you know, and type in, you know, so just start by typing in the, the, the combined keywords. Cigars and scotch, okay? Here's an example. Here's some, um, a five panel, a five panel printed canvas of, of a picture of cigars and scotch, okay? There's a five panel printed canvas right there. So that, that's an example right there, right? And then there's also print on demand canvases. So there's also, you know, you can go to a print on demand company. There's lots of them out there. You know, here's interest print, for example. And you can go find something. You want to go get an image of cigar and scotch and see what it might, what it might be good on. You know, like what I might do is I might take like pillows. And then what you might do is put like, you know, a design on a pillow. Maybe not a cigar on a pillow, but you know what I'm saying? Like home decor you know, cigars and scotch, you could basically put it on all kinds of stuff, okay? So you just kind of look for like those, um, those options. Okay, you, you look for what might work. Okay, you look for something where it might work. Maybe a cell phone case with cigars and scotch on it, a canvas print, um, like, a, like a canvas print like this, art prints, you know, you could do like an art print. So a canvas print, it's just like this. You can go and you can customize a canvas print. Um, oh, it looks like I don't have a, flash running. I'm not going to do it live right now. But you can basically upload a picture of cigar and wine on this and then you have something you can sell to that audience. Okay? Get a cigar and wine canvas print. And that's kind of what this is. This is a five panel print with a nice picture to sell it. You know? And this is going to cost you, you know, whatever. You could do large size, framed, and that's $60. Large size with no frame is $14. So you could go like large size, no frame. Okay? That's $14 your cost. You can sell them for $29.95 and make money on this. So that's an example. You're, you're finding a way to intersect an audience. So now, let's, um, let me give you guys that are watching live, let me give you a challenge. Okay, challenge in the Facebook, um, quick, uh, quick Facebook live challenge. Post your ideas of two intersecting audiences. But um, they're related to each other but one might not like the other, okay? Just like the cigars and scotch um, audience, okay? I wanna see right now, I'm gonna give you guys a couple minutes. Go ahead and do it, and if you guys are watching the replay, you can also comment in the comments as well, even if you're watching the replay, but do that right now. Take a second and think about it yourself. Post your ideas of two intersecting audiences right now, and then I'll show you more, but do it, do it. Give yourself a second and think through and go in the comments right now and see what you can do. Okay, give you guys a second here and then I'm gonna start reading them. Okay, let's go here. And let's see if anybody's got some good ideas. Okay, fire and water. Not necessarily, because fire and water aren't necessarily as much things people like. Those are just general um, elements. <clears throat> okay, pet owners, dogs and cats. There's an interesting one. Some people like dogs but hate cats. Some people like cats but hate dogs. But if you had a product that was like maybe like an example for this one, Bruce, would be like a pet grooming product. Uh, a, a pet grooming product that works for both a dog and a cat. So let's say like pet grooming. Um, you might find like something like this right here. Okay. So see how there's, a, there's, this, there's this hand right here that basically it's a, it's a, it's a glove, like a mitt you wear, and it can basically um, gently, you can massage and pet your, your dog because dogs shed, you know, so you could basically do that. But here's the thing. The question is, if you just had this picture and you advertise to people who like cats, it wouldn't work. But the, you gotta, you gotta, if you had a picture of a cat and a dog, if in your example, if you showed how this is good for dog lovers and cat lovers, 
you can actually target people who love dogs and cats. Now, go here in the feedback and you start looking at this. Um, you start looking at this thing like, look, my dogs loved it. But look at this one right here. Very good to my cats. My cats love them. So see, here's a product where dogs love them and cats love them. It's the same exact product, but people are using them for your dogs and cat. Dog and cat. So people are using this um, to be able to take care of their dogs and their cats. Now that you know that, this image right here would only go well to dog owners, but if you could do an image for dog and cat, so that's where an idea like that might help. Dogs and cats, you could take a product and make it match both. You could take a picture of both. You could say, here's how to, here's how to groom your dog, here's how to groom your pet, and you can target people who like both so they're not turned off. Clothing and makeup, um, you know, it's a little bit more general, uh, and I would say that's, get dive a little deeper because everybody has clothing and all women have makeup, so it's not really... It's, it's, you want to get a little bit more specific. Bags of makeup, I would still stay a little bit more specific. Um, let's see. I'm not sure what the dark post uh, question is regarding. Okay, let's see. Wine and hunting. There we go. There's a good one, okay? Because hunters, people are out there hunting um, might not like wine, and people like wine might not like hunting at all. So there's, there's two that are like, those are two that are great. Let's, let's go in and let's type, type in wine and hunting. Okay, just as an example, you're going to go, the first one you're going to do wine, interest, and then you're going to narrow it down and you're going to do hunting. So look, 6.9 million people like wine, hunting, interest, and let me go all, let me make this a little bit bigger. Let's go 21 and over. Okay, so 12 million people in this audience, wine and hunting, okay? But if I just do hunting, it's 33 million. So I'm able to narrow it down by typing in wine, and you've got a crossover audience. There are 12 million people who like both hunting and wine. 12 million people. So you're able to narrow it down. Now you can narrow this down even further. Like let me give you an example of narrowing it down further, okay? Let's say, um, let's be more specific, hunting and craft beer. That's 2.4 million. So instead of wine, what if you did a, a, a type of, not, not just beer, but a type of beer. Now you can target a craft beer ad specifically for hunters, right? So you could do like, you know, you go over here and you would do like, go in here, go craft beer, find a product, you know, find, find these um, products that are selling whatever and see if there's something having to do with craft beer, you know, um, you know, maybe like a craft beer sign, like a vintage sign. Uh, you could find like a craft beer sign. Um, there's like lots of things you could do. Now these don't really look like craft beer so much, so I don't know that I would use these if I was doing craft beer, but, and I wouldn't use something that's like a, a brand, but what I would do is like, just to give you an example, just, I'll take any one of these. Okay, take, take like it was this one right here, like a, a vintage, uh, a vintage type sign, okay, or, or this one here, everyone needs something to believe in, I believe I'll have another beer. Now, here's a, here's a beer product. Okay, something somebody might want to uh, to put this like in their man cave or in their whatever. What you're looking to do is you're looking to maybe try to find a way to add another add an element to this that basically adds another audience. So let's say hunting. If you want to target this to people who like beer, that's going to be too big. But if you can somehow turn this into a hunting ad, what you might do is instead of it just being on a wall, what you might do is you might want to do like get go to like Google and type in like log cabin interior, okay? So somebody who lives in like a log cabin home, okay? And you might wanna find like a pic, you might wanna find like a picture of like a log cabin wall or something like that, right? Like, you know, maybe like a better picture of this. So do you see how they have these pictures hanging on the side of that wall right there? Well, that's the kind of concept right there is that if those pictures right there were that same craft beer vintage sign, if we just put that same craft beer vintage sign right here and we show that, then suddenly it's a direct match. You know, here's people who like, you know, um, let's say like hunting wall, vintage sign. Let's see if there's somebody, let's, let's see like, and you might even be able to find one that's more like beer related, like hunting and beer uh, as well. But see like hunters always have these hunting signs, right? Like gun signs, Remington guns, they love these vintage signs to, to hang up.